Welcome to the NorCal Minute, bite-sized business advice presented by the Shasta Cascade SBDC. Hi, my name is Keith Obilana, and I'm a business advisor with the Shasta Small Business Development Center. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Matt Plummer, who's the CEO and founder of Zarvana. Zarvana is a local company here in Reading, and they specialize in productivity and efficiency. We decided to interview Matt just because we know a lot of people are working from home and many are struggling with trying to find a work-life balance and stay productive while working from home. This is Matt's area of specialty, and I hope that today you'll pick up some tools and tricks that'll help you be more productive working from home. All right, we'll, uh, we'll kick this off. So, hi, Matt. Hi, Keith. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks so much for having me on the show here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. And, um, you know, just kind of what we're all going through with working at home and just this new virtual work environment, I thought um, speaking to someone like yourself might be extremely helpful. So uh, before we get going, why don't you just kind of tell us a little bit about you, your company and, and what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. So I started Zarmana in Reading about th- th- almost three years ago now after spending a number of years working at a management consulting firm. And during that time, I had seen a lot of my colleagues kind of burning out. And after a few years and going back to business school or changing careers, even though they liked what they were doing, because they couldn't figure out you know, how to make the job sustainable for them. And so the... Um, we, uh, I, I was like, I don't want that to be my future. I don't want that to be kind of what happens. And so I went on this journey of figuring out how do I become more productive? How do I get more done in less time? And that led me to a place where I was working under 40 hours a week when the average was about 50 to 55 and managing, you know, three to four projects when others were managing two. And so that was the genesis of Zervana, which then was how do I take that and get that to other people? And in the midst of that, I ended up working remotely, uh, both when I was at the management consulting consulting firm during my first year um, while living in Reading, and then since then uh, with a remote team actually spanning right now three continents. Uh, our team spans three continents. And so when, uh, you know, the coronavirus began, you know, kind of in earnest in, in uh, the U.S., there was a question of like, okay, how do we how do we take what we've done, which is specialize in productivity and time management, and the experience we've had of working remotely over the last three years, and and help people who are making that transition for the first time. Yeah. And so we've begun to build some resources around that to help people make that transition. Which, uh, you know, as many people are saying, and signs are pointing to, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a temporary one for a large portion of the workforce. Right. It's, it's kind of a crazy, crazy thing. All of a sudden people are thrust into this environment of, of working from home and having to figure all of that out. Um, so I know we've talked the, beforehand and you guys right now are offering a, a free tool right on your on your website. Um, it's a, a virtual um, virtual productivity toolkit. Right. Yeah, exactly. We said, what are the key challenges that people are facing in this transition and came up with about six or seven different categories of those. And then, you know, one of our kind of core values is bringing research to bear on what actually works for people versus what feels like it might work because that's not always the most productive one. And so then we went through these categories, pulling from what we had experienced ourselves, but then also validating what the research shows about these categories, like how do you do online communication, remote meetings, and which meetings to have and not have, uh, what collaboration tools can you use, uh, how do you stay focused in the midst of being in a home environment uh, where you might have kids running around screaming in the background or what, knocking on the door or whatever else. So, um, and, and so yeah, th- there's 44 pages that go through those challenges and offer some research backed advice, um, practical advice on how to take action and make this adjustment. Because, and here's, here's the real thing that we try to get across in the beginning of the toolkit is that while there are certainly some challenges to working remotely and certainly anytime you make an adjustment of that magnitude, it's going to be disruptive. There is real potential for an upside here. So, <clears throat> 
while there are you know real challenges the there are uh, significant upsides one of the biggest studies on the productivity and effectiveness of remote workers found that the remote workers were 13 percent more productive than those in the office and so there's a significant upside there but also for the individual employee who, uh, in terms of work life satisfaction and <clears throat> Um, you know, overall enjoyment and with life and health. And so um, we want people to be able to seize those benefits during this time, whether it be temporary or whether it be something more extended for them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I had a chance to look through your, your toolkit and I think there's a lot of um, great items on there. Um, there were three in particular just for the sake of time that I, that I wanted us to focus on. Um, so the first one was how to stay focused. Um, I think for a lot of people who working from home is new to them, this would be a challenge because all of a sudden you, you have the distractions of your home life all around you. So could you just give me some high level tips or tricks that, that you have found helpful in helping people stay focused during this virtual work environment we find ourselves in? Yeah, absolutely. And where I would start is to first just provide a framework for how to think about it, which is there's two types of uh, distractions are things that will cause you to lose focus. There are external distractions and then there's internal distractions. External distractions is the sound of someone yelling in the background. It's construction or a garbage truck passing by outside. Internal distractions are thoughts or feelings or, you know, anything that is prompt coming from within you that would cause you to be like, oh, wait, I forgot to call my family member who I know is struggling with you know, is sick right now. And, you know, so you're thinking about that all the time. Yeah. And so those are two pieces of that you, and they require different strategies. So when it comes to external distractions, you can silence them. So something like your phone notifications, you can turn off, which you should do. Um, <clears throat> and, or you can, you can group them. Uh, so meaning rather than having them happen kind of sp unpredictably throughout the day, you can have them happen all at once oh, in wow. certain periods of time. So it might be something like, okay, I'm not gonna leave notifications on for my phone or for um, you know, social media, and then I'm gonna schedule time to go ahead and check my phone. You know, At 11 o'clock, I'm gonna go check my phone, I'm gonna check social media, go through that, handle all those interruptions at once so that I don't have to allow them to come in randomly throughout yeah. the day. I like that, that that's huge. Um, because it's, it's, it addresses that notion of the, the fear of missing out, right? People, people fear or, don't want to don't want to think about what they're they're going to be missing out if they don't check it. So it gives them these times throughout the day to help them um, check in and just see what's going on. But the time it sets aside time to say, hey, I'm focused right now, getting into my workflow, and so you don't have that constant distraction. That's a that's a really good tip. Okay. Yeah, and exactly. And you're trying to take what is unpredictable and disruptive and make it predictable, not necessarily eliminate it. Yeah. The yeah. The other thing that you, you want to think about is from an internal di distractions is uh, what, what is it in your environment around you prompts you to think about, feel, and engage in certain behaviors. So if you think about how a habit works, it's a prompt or a cue or a trigger. You know, people use different language for that. Right. And then a behavior. And so when I, if you walk into the kitchen and you smell cookies baking, right, that's going to trigger some feelings and thoughts of yeah. like, oh, I want to eat a cookie right now. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk into the office, there's certain prompts and cues that cause you to think work related behaviors. Mm -hmm. but when you walk into your bedroom, when you walk into your home, your living room, your kitchen, all those things around you in your environment are prompting you to engage in home related behaviors, mm -hmm. not work related behaviors. And that can be super distracting. And so what we recommend is as much as possible, if you have a separate room, that's great. But even if you don't, to carve out a space that you use exclusively or almost exclusively for work and to design that space, even in small, way, small ways, like the picture on the wall or, you know, the, the, the plant there or the things on your desk that trigger you to engage in work-related behaviors versus personal um, and life behaviors. Yeah. And so that um, is going to help even if it's just even if it's just a small space to carve that out so that that can be uh, a reinforcing mechanism for work-related behaviors. 
No, that's really good. And, and that's one of the things that I like about you guys' process is, is the science that goes into it. Like everything that I've read, there's research and there's data behind it. So it's not just, oh, I think, or it's, there's actual proven methodology behind it. And, and so I love that. And, and the notion that, hey, there's actually things going on in your brain that you're not necessarily thinking about that are triggering one thing or another. And that, that's, that's excellent. Really good. Exactly. Yeah. What about uh, maintaining um, and increasing your work life satisfaction? What are some some tips there? Yeah. And so according to one survey, the, the greatest or the, the most commonly reported challenge for remote workers is unplugging after work. And that, you know, is for a number of reasons. Um, basically, what happens when you go to working from home is the lines between work and life get blurred or completely erased. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and going back to this idea of prompts and cues is things that used to prompt you to stop work no longer do. And so you might, you know, have been in an office place where other people are leaving. And so you're like, oh, I'm going to leave now. Or, you know, you know, the, the train is coming and you have to train or bus, you know, or, you know, and, and depending on where you live is coming. So you have to jump on, on that. And so there's different cues. And so the, the thing to do is to start instilling some of those routines and cues back into your life so that you have some sense of routine. And the first place to start is to add a start and stop time for work mm -hmm. because it's easy, you know, 80% of people check their phones within 15 minutes of waking up in the morning. Yeah. And so that means if I'm in, you know, if I might wake up, I lean over, grab my phone, I check it. I see an email from work. I'm like, oh, let me just take care of this right away. I roll out of bed to my desk and now I'm working and now I might just like continue working for the next few hours. And there was no sense of like morning routine, healthy behaviors there that happened. Uh, and I just jumped right into work. And so picking a time, okay, I'm gonna start work at eight and or 8.30 or nine, what, you know, whatever time it might be, um, creates some structure to that and allows you to unintentional or prevents you from unintentionally easing yeah. into work where life would be man that that is great i've i've worked from home for years now actually i've, I've been self-employed and, and had my own business so i've kind of got into a groove but so much of what you're saying i'm like that is so applicable to me and i think specifically in my situation and what other people who you know this might become a more permanent situation for them um i think this that kind of keys into that burnout Right. And, and I've experienced that myself because because I don't have a, a start and stop. It all just kind of blends together. So it feels like I've never fully shut off from work. So that those are some really good, good tips for that. I like that. All right. Final one. And this is the one that I think, you know, I talk to so many people who are on conference calls all day, a lot of Zoom stuff or or whatever, and um, even though we're interacting with people digitally, we're still experiencing um, social isolation, right? So um, what are some, some um, tricks and tips here in terms of how to avoid that social isolation? Yeah, so I would start with the, the idea that there's kind of a conception that the opposite of isolation is interaction. And so if I just increase my level of interaction with other people, I won't feel isolated. And when it comes to the professional context, that's not true. You know, social isolation is a multi-dimensional issue. And so we talk about the five dimensions of social isolation, which has to do with uh, your employee performance or, you know, your performance as, say, I'm, you know, as an employee. And so that has to do with, do I know how I'm doing at work? Am I doing a good job? Am I not doing a good job? Uh, the next is around impact and what's the impact of my work? Do I feel like I'm contributing and adding value to my organization, to my clients, et cetera? <clears throat> Third is around development. Do I feel like I'm developing, learning, and growing? Uh, the fourth is around resources. And this is kind of the fundamental foundation of isolation, which means you don't have access to the resources that you need. And so that's around resources, tools, and information. And then the fifth is around, to the extent you're working in the context of a company, uh, do you have access to company updates and know what's happening in the company? Mm -hmm. And so those five dimensions all impact our sense of isolation. And if we don't have a sense of how we're doing or how things are going in those, then we're going to feel isolated. And the, the challenge with remote work is that things that happen organically or informally 
in the office are, don't happen yeah. organically or informally when you're working remotely. For example, you might have a good sense of how you're doing just by rubbing shoulders with and, and working alongside your manager or supervisor all day and you know, gauging their interactions with you and those nonverbal cues that they're sending. But if now you, you just have a, you know, a short meeting with them and uh, you know, it's focused on a specific work task, you might not be picking up on like, oh, how's my manager actually feeling about how I'm doing? And so what used to be kind of informal now has to become more intentional yeah. and more deliberate. And yeah. so thinking about those dimensions and you know, there's specific strategies for each of them, but thinking holistically about each of those strategies and how are you getting the information and resources that you need along those dimensions so that you can feel like you know what's going on there and feel like you are connected to something like you're contributing. Yeah, that's really good. And I think um, that that hits it from kind of both sides, both from the managers and the employees, uh, both being aware from that of that and both setting up um, things that that address that. Um, and, and I think being proactive on both sides of it, it, it would be essential. Um, that's really good. Cool. Uh, Matt, if, if people have more questions or want to reach out to you, is there a way that they can get a con get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they can feel free to email me. It's matt.plumber, P-L-U-M-M-E-R, at zarvana.com. Or you can check out zarvana.com. We have a number of other resources around remote work and then our broader set of, uh, you know, strategies around productivity, critical thinking, management, and burnout prevention. Excellent, excellent, yeah. And like I said, the, the um, virtual toolkit that's free on your website right now, um, I looked through it and there's a lot more information on there just for the sake of time. We didn't have um, enough time to go through all of those, but that's definitely a great resource for, for people who are um, working from home right now. Matt, thank you so much for, for joining us and for sharing some of your, your wisdom with us in this, in this season. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be a part of this. For more information or to apply to work with one of our advisors at no cost to you, visit us online at sbdcsc.org.